So today I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of Blender tests and it's not just going to be renders and, and stuff like that because that's only one aspect to obviously Blender. So I've got the 16 inch with the M1 Max configured and this is the 32 core GPU model with the 10 core CPU and I've also got the 14 inch base model so that's the 8 core CPU and 14 core GPU. So let's see how these machines handle in Blender. Hi there everyone, this is Mike from Tech Car Moon. and if you enjoy Apple tech and Apple related tech then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified. So let's just get straight into the video. So right now we've got the classic classroom test which is a great test but we're going to do something a little bit different. Because Blender only uses the CPU, which again may change in the future, I believe there may be a GPU launch of Blender uh, in the works at the moment. So we will be revisiting uh, this whole test when that is enabled. Um, but right now we're gonna be seeing what the performance is like with a 10 core C uh, or an eight core CPU on this side and a 10 core CPU on this side. And we're also gonna see if the GPU makes any difference or not but obviously this is only really using the CPU to, to process all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little test that's slightly different than others. So I'm going to see how quickly it can do the ray tracing path samples on this image. So we're going to go three, two, one. And we're going to see which one can uh, ray, uh, do the path uh, tracing samples quicker and we're going to see if that extra two cores actually makes a difference in the real world. So which one? They're pretty much neck and neck at the moment. So it's just taking 50 samples. Uh, it looks like the 16 inch is slightly ahead. Uh, but to be honest, let's have a look. Is That's hit 50 and that's hit 50. So honestly, it's about a second difference, which okay yeah that's not really gonna matter now when it came to rendering out these images the m1 pro took 10 minutes and 59 seconds and the m1 max took 8 minutes and 26 seconds so it's about a 20 percent difference which yeah i mean can make a big difference when it comes to larger files but what we're going to do is, is we're going to load up some different projects including animation projects to really see if there is a huge difference between these two Macs or not. And now we have the barbershop test. So this one here is a little bit more intense than the Blender Classroom uh, test, which I think is gonna benefit you a lot more because I'm seeing a lot of like BMW and Classroom tests, which is fine, but let's be honest, there's more sort of uh, intense uh, projects than the BMW and Classroom test. So here's the barbershop one and we're gonna see how quickly it takes to render out the two. So on the M1 Pro, it took 16 minutes and 38 seconds. And on the M1 Max, that took uh, 12 minutes and 50 seconds. So we're now seeing the gap widen ever so slightly as we start to be a little bit more intense with the programs that we're using. Now let's see how it handles more intense Blender programs. So now we have the flat Blender project and this is basically an apartment and it just basically renders out an image. But as you can see, there's a lot more going on with this project than all the other projects that we've seen before. So now let's see how quickly it can change the display render. So we've clicked on that. It's obviously going into wire and there you go. So we've got path tracing samples of 300. So there's a lot more samples now it's got to go through for the image to be displayed at obviously its full render here. So we're gonna just see how which one obviously is quicker so far they're pretty much neck and neck okay so we've just hit 290 and to be honest they're going to finish identically rendering down rendering done so yeah there was no difference between the two they both finished at the exact same time so and have a look at the cpu both were sort of pinned quite high actually not not at 100 percent but Definitely, definitely pretty high, but they both finished at the exact same time, which is very, very interesting. So now let's see how quickly it took to render these two. 
So on the M1 Pro, it took 21 minutes and 59 seconds. And on the M1 Max, it took 16 minutes and 59 and 58 seconds. So again, the M1 Max does win in the Blender render test, which is to be expected. And as we're seeing, the gap is widening as we start to push the systems more and more. So the next test we have is actually an animation test to see how it can handle animations. So right over here, we have the forest animation project and it's a really good project. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how playback is. So three, two, one. And yeah, the M1 Max is definitely playing back with visually no drop frames. Whereas the M1 Pro is definitely struggling with this animation. Beautiful animation, but yeah, it's it's definitely almost real time, I believe, on the M1 Pro, on the M1 Max, sorry. Whereas, yeah, on the base 14, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of drop frames. So it's definitely struggling to play that on the M1 Pro. So if you are doing animation work and it's you know similar to this, I mean, we've got some other animation tests to go through, but it, it definitely looks at first glance. And again, just from other testing that I've done, with Blender animations. Uh, it definitely does look like the 10 core CPU, whatever it's doing in here, is definitely being used uh, more efficiently in here than it is on the M1 Pro. Um, as it says here, look, animated file with animated particles and materials and bloom effects. Definitely a lot going on in these renders. It, it definitely looks like the M1 Max is the one to go for for this kind of work. But let's see how quickly it takes to render out these animations. On the M1 Pro, it took 13 minutes and 11 seconds. And on the M1 Max, it took eight minutes and 36 seconds. So very quick. Again, this is rendering uh, 350 frames, uh, obviously on both. And yeah, those are pretty respectable times. However, I will get into why these aren't the best max to use when you're rendering in Blender. And yeah, stick around. The next animation we have is the restaurant animation. Now I've Cancelled out the sound uh, so that in case we get copyrighted, there's there's not going to be any issues here. But again, let's play that back. And on the M1 Pro, we're seeing around 16 and a half frames per second. And on the M1 Max, we're seeing 19, 18, sort of, yeah, hovering around that 19. So we're seeing around three extra frames on the M1 Max over the base M1 Pro. I particularly don't think that's that impressive considering we're spending 50% more and we've got not that big of a difference. But again, uh, like I said, it's not being optimized for the GPUs. So realistically, yeah, it's it's not the it's not really the max fault. It's obviously the software. Okay, let's check out the RAM quickly. We're not even touched. I mean, yeah, we're we're not even touching the 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that, obviously, this isn't the most complex render. Uh, but the fact that it's not playing back at full native speeds. It's, it's definitely pushing both systems. There's still definitely a bottleneck on the, the CPU. Now to render out 280 frames of this, on the M1 Pro, it took 52 minutes and 37 seconds. And on the M1 Max, it took 38 minutes and 55 seconds. A considerable difference now uh, when we're looking at the render times for each of these. I will say that it was rendered with the, the FS MPEG video format, uh, QuickTime uh, container, and then we have the H.264 format with the output quality being high quality and the encoding speed being good. So both are set identically and those are the render times that we got for this animation. Okay, and the last test we have is the classic EV uh, Splash Fox test. So this is a, a really popular test and we're gonna see how the playback is. And yeah, we're not really seeing any issues in terms of playback as you can see. Oh, I think when it restarts, it just drops, but it's playing back 
both at 24 frames per second. Now let's up the quality ever so slightly. So taking a little bit of time on, on both machines. Uh, I didn't click them at the same time, but anyway, let's play back the animation and see if both are doing well. No. <laughs> so this is playing at 3.54 frames per second and this is playing at 4.35 frames per second. So not even a frame difference between the two. So yeah, both can't play it. That's very clear. Now in terms of the animation render test, on the 14 inch, I actually had troubles trying to render this out, but with the estimations and stuff like this, uh, I believe that this would have taken around 40 minutes, uh, maybe 35 minutes on, on the M1 Pro, whereas on the M1 Max, uh, it completed the test in 21 minutes. Take that as you wish. I mean, unfortunately, I tried everything to, to get this to work on the M1 Pro. And, and to be honest, I think it's something maybe wrong with with, with the file, how I maybe downloaded it. I'm not quite sure. For whatever reason, I, I just couldn't figure out why I couldn't get the M1 Pro to render out the animation. But let's be honest, both machines could have done a lot better, okay? I think for images and stuff like that, these machines will, will do well. But when it comes to animations and, and, and anything more, uh, these machines do fall behind and it's Blender just needs to update Blender with a GPU accelerated rendering because yeah, just doing it on the CPU is, is just not enough. Now, what was really interesting with these tests was that Funnily enough, it was slower than most sort of prosumer Windows laptops because with those laptops, you can configure them with uh, NVIDIA graphics cards. And depending on obviously which NVIDIA graphics card you, you go for, the render times were just so much faster. Like right now, if you are a Blender artist, I would hold off on getting either one of these machines. Of course, if we're looking at CPU, CPU rendering, then yeah, potentially these might be better, but realistically, you're gonna hand off a lot of that processing power to the GPU if you can, right? And right now, you, you just can't do it on the M1 Pros or, or the M1 Maxes, which is a real shame. Um, now, I, I will just say this. I am not a Blender artist. I don't have extensive experience with Blender. I know how to, you know, navigate around it. I will have a Blender artist who does fantastic work and we're gonna put these machines to the test once the Blender update is out. So please make sure you stay subscribed. But anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed this Blender test. I hope that this was a little bit more detailed than some of the other videos that you may have seen. And you've seen a variety of different types of Blender projects. And also try to download these projects, head over to the Blender website and download these projects and run them on your own computer and use this video as a benchmark. But anyway, leave a comment down below on what you thought, if there's any improvement Give this video a like if you've enjoyed it and make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified. But you guys know what to do. If you want to see more videos from me, go ahead, click on one of these two videos. I know you're going to absolutely love it. So go ahead, just click on it. Uh, yeah, I'll be happy for you to leave this video for one of those. Anyway, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.